Now don't switch off, you're not watching a repeat of an old phone show. Now I've previously reviewed this, the Next Doc Touch in Phone Show 412 as a piece of hardware in its own right, i.e. as a lap dock accessory for your smartphone. And I've also featured it briefly in Phone Show 416 when talking about, well, putting in faster QWERTY into your phone, as you'd expect. Plus the follow-up product, the Next Doc 360, which has a full hinge capable of tent and tablet modes is on its way, so watch this space. But the generic concept behind all of this is one that continues to fascinate me. Sparked by a general dissatisfaction in both Windows and Mac OS in terms of getting things done on the move. Windows continues to always be in need of micromanagement of updates to fix vulnerability after vulnerability and with applications that seem positively clunky on smaller displays such as that on my otherwise prized Surface Go featured in my look at the mobile office in Phone Show 421. Now Mac OS is substantially more secure and stable in my opinion and less in need of management but at the same time Apple has been shooting itself in the foot from my point of view by making it harder and harder to run the utilities I've come to rely on in my workflows and it seems I'm not the only journalist to hang on to older Mac hardware and older versions of the OS just to keep 32-bit applications alive. I'll admit I haven't tried Chrome OS for a few years, so maybe it's time to get a, a Chromebook back in. But even so, Chrome OS is inherently limited in what it can do and would also fall foul of my workflow and needs, of which recording and editing podcasts come to mind, plus others, including video and image editing. Now, although using the likes of Samsung's DeX desktop running on a smartphone also falls foul of some of the same functionality limitations. It also promises a theoretical and hugely attractive simplicity by eliminating the need for another OS, period. As covered back in my next doc touch review, you only then have to worry about one OS. One OS to keep updated, one OS to keep secure. All authentication is done using the phone's biometrics and remember tokens. So email, cloud accounts, banking, work, document collaborations, video chats. It's all handled as you via the phone with no extra passwords or account lookups needed. No challenges, no periodic password re-entry on the keyboard. DEX or similar is running on your phone and thus uses all your smartphone identity information. On the other hand, with the best will in the world, mobile class applications can often not do quite as much as desktop class versions. And despite the best efforts of Samsung and others and the accessory makers like Nextdoc, things don't usually line up in software with commonly Windows failing to maximize or audio going astray, that sort of thing. It's a UI complication too many. In fact, I did this short demo for All About Mobile last week. I'll include this here by way of illustration of DEX working well-ish. So yes, demonstrating DEX, a continuum like desktop running off a Galaxy S20 FE here. This is the next dock touch as evidenced by the fact that I'm using the touch screen. I'm using my finger to swipe around. You can also use the trackpad and buttons as I shall do later. Here I've got four tabs loaded with some reasonable content, typical content. A site you might recognise the swiping up and down loading images. So the idea here is to see how much it, it data it can keep in RAM and in the browser tabs, all running on the phone remember, but all being rendered out here onto the laptop and how quickly it can reproduce it all on the 1080p external screen here. Let's try the, um, the Android Twitter client as a change from the Android PWA which we saw there running in Chrome. This is the Android Twitter application. It does resize. You can adjust the corners and so forth but there's no flow or layout so if you just make, even make it full screen here you can see it literally takes up the full screen with one column. There's no sensible layout at all. So that's somewhere where Twitter could improve its Android application. Let's try Gmail, a really well behaved application as you'd expect written by Google and indeed most of the Google and Samsung apps can be resized, re-window, they flow intelligently. Here you've got um, topics on the left and then detail on the right, you can resize it, reflow, and if you reflow right down to a narrow column, of course it goes back to the layout you'd see on, a, on the phone itself. And then as you drag to resize the window, it reflows well. And again, true of all the uh, Google and Samsung applications, it's the third parties and the oddballs you have to watch out for. So what about Microsoft Office? I guess Microsoft apps should also be fairly well behaved, and in general they are. 
Um, here we're bringing up a Word file. I think this is in read-only mode, so there's no rib editing ribbon shown. I've also got a demonstration PowerPoint, which uh, you can resize, as we can with most of the Office applications. You can resize to full screen. They run it in their own window, and you can mess around with the size. They reflow using a touchscreen, keyboard, trackpad. Um, the menus fully work, bringing up different ribbons for each function. It's all quite a pleasant experience, and of course you've got the, the big keyboard to do text entry, and it gets some serious work done. Just to show that uh, the tabs are still open in Chrome here, in RAM, and running reasonably quickly. See, I'm not 100% happy with the speed of a, a phone running in Dex mode through HDMI into a laptop, but I think it's acceptable. It's just a question of whether it's acceptable to you. It's still impressive that all this mostly works at all, but it's a step down from what one might expect from a dedicated computer of the same size running Windows or Mac OS. Now, sticking with a browser-based workflow or centering on Google or Samsung applications, the DEC experience is almost indistinguishable from using another laptop with a desktop class OS. The issues start when you want to branch out and do anything tricky. Editing utilities spring to mind for me or when you want to start watching video streaming services such as entertainment, where apps simply aren't coded with DEX and a 1080p screen in mind, so you just get a small phone-sized window. Both are a crying shame because the large display of a laptop or Continuum-esque external screen would pay dividends for these use cases. Having said that, my experience is still more positive than negative, plus updates are always arriving to DEX itself and Motorola's ready for etc and individual applications via the Play Store, so this is a setup that will always need retesting. Samsung DeX does include a lab set of experimental features, one of which is forced to full screen, but in my experience this also messes up other aspects, such as audio. Now I've not mentioned games here because they mostly, and with good reason, don't work properly with DeX, other than appearing in their own landscape phone size window. Although desktop extending isn't exactly on game developers' radar, it would be nice to play, say, a flight simulator full screen and see the scenery more clearly. Now, forcing full screen mode does work with some, though not all, games and with varying degrees of impact on whether the software interface still works. I still cannot believe that with all Samsung's effort behind DeX and with all their resources, they haven't even tried to make a laptop of their own. It seems such an obvious accessory and I think that at say £250 they'd still find a good market. Now other ways of having a mobile laptop experience without actually having to use Mac OS or Windows do exist of course. I'll perhaps report back on the status of Chrome OS later in 2021 plus there's what's the increasingly appealing if you have the funds we're talking over £1,500 using an iPad Pro with Apple's magic keyboard. Very nice hardware. Each of these solutions have some phone integration, at least at the services level, but neither are as geekily elegant as DeX, Continuum on the old Lumias, Motorola's Ready4, Huawei's Easy Projection, LG's now sadly obsolete in terms of support, desktop, or Google's long rumoured desktop mode and Android, which we'll maybe see in the Pixel 6 later in 2021. Talking of geekly elegant, I did have fun pushing the limits with my Samsung S20 FE, driving not only DeX, but also the Your Phone system that links into Windows on my Surface Go at the same time. With the phone interface also usable, we then effectively have a three screen system running mostly on Android, all driven from the one phone that's being kept charged by the huge battery in the next dock. But that's getting geeky for the sake of it and a bit impractical. There isn't one solution that suits everyone here. There's not even a solution that perfectly suits me. But that's not going to stop me trying and reporting back. I'm sure you'd expect nothing less. Oh, and don't worry, I haven't stopped doing smartphone reviews. It's just that we're in a bit of a hardware lull, at least here in the UK, and I'm waiting for shiny, shiny stuff to arrive through the summer.